Rob Ferretti here, and next to me I have a $600,000 Rolls-Royce extended wheelbase Phantom. Now, why am I showing this to you? Because to me, spending $600,000 in a luxury car is not in the cards for me. It's just mind blowing to me, very surprising. And you start to wonder like, well, you can go out and buy an S550 for 120,000, Bentley maybe 250. What are you getting for 600,000? I'm about to show you some of the options you didn't even know you really wanted but you probably do if you have the money like that to spend. Let's check it out. Now, if you notice on the wheels down here, the R's are perfectly vertical. That is a Rolls-Royce trademark. You'll never see them spinning. There's some weights in there. This is a free floating thing in the center of the wheel that the RR will always be perfectly vertical while the wheel spins around it. These tires, you'll notice the front and rear tires. Even if you go on tire rack, these are uh, 255 50R21s. These Eagles are made specifically for the Rolls-Royce because it's such a heavy car. They cost over $800 a piece, even on the tire rack, uh, not, not like dealer markup. Even through tire rack, they're over $800 a tire. That's a lot of money for tires. A lot of what you're paying for is the unmistakable Rolls-Royce look. When you see a Rolls-Royce come and you're like, that's a Rolls-Royce. They always take a lot of people, you know, may want to take a souvenir of that Rolls-Royce. They hide it, the flying lady goes in and out. Now they make a couple different variants of this. I don't know which one this is, but they're all different prices depending on how crazy you want to go. And when you lock the car, that thing will tuck away. And that's the end of the story. Now the whole thing about the Rolls Royce, you don't really care too much about the exterior. You're buying a Rolls Royce to be driven in, especially an extended wheelbase. Let's see what it's like when you go in. Now, I'm just gonna highlight some of the things that to me are just like, wow, that's really cool. It's worth that much. Starting here with the drink drawers and the thing, this will hold beverages and glasses. And this option here is $12,000. $12,000 for these in each of the doors. If you see these carpets, I don't want to put my feet on these carpets. I'm not even going in the car. You know why? Because these carpets are so plush and soft. It's like you're rubbing a rabbit. It's gorgeous. It's fluffy. It's awesome. And it's almost better to look at and like sit on barefoot than actually like getting in the car all dirty and, and screwing that up. Another thing you'll notice on the outside, say it's raining. What are you going to do? Get a nice umbrella in the door. And that comes in very handy. You don't want to break one of those because those are 1200 I know from the rental company, 12 or $1,600 per umbrella. So that's something that we ended up eventually not even putting the umbrellas in the rental cars because people broke them and they like fidgeted them back together and stuffed them in the door. And by the time we found out they were broken, too late. This car has the, the split rear seat. So instead of a bench seat, it's got two individual seats in the back. That costs another $12,000. And these all add up like, wow, I was really, that's how you get the car to a $600,000 price tag. The base model, the base, extended wheelbase is $480,000. So that's an Aventador Roadster right there. You're starting off, if you take zero options, give me whatever you got, base car, it's $480,000. This one, and you're gonna have to sort of duck down here to see it's got the $12,000, $13,000, whatever it is, starry sky in the roof liner. You gotta check that out, that's pretty cool. Tinted windows, not enough privacy for you. Here you have the electronic blackout shade that goes across the both rear windows, 8,000 bucks for shades. I can do my whole house with shades for $8,000. And it's like bigger than the car. It's like a couple of shades, a couple of windows. So you also have the reclining seats, the nice pillow headrests, and above dropping out of the ceiling, you have two screens. So you have individual screens to watch while you're reclined, sipping champagne, in your Rolls-Royce Phantom, extended wheelbase, completely relaxed. I was looking on the website, they have an option for a partition so you can separate yourself from the driver if you were to do so. Uh, this car does not have that. And I know you're asking yourself, like, is it worth it? Is it worth getting this car over, over an S550? Is, does the money stay there? I mean, if you have the money to drop, this isn't a car that you go out and get a loan on. This is. $580,000, $600,000 plus tax. The tax on that, even in New Jersey, 7%. You're talking another $50,000 in tax just for the car. So you're at $650,000 before you walk out the door. So 
If you got 650 grand to spend, absolutely, it's great. It's a great experience. Is it as good or that much better than a Rolls Royce, than a, uh, I'm sorry, a Mercedes S550 or a Maybach? I'm not to say, I don't have the money to spend. The one thing that is something that I can guarantee is that these cars, if you look for a used one or two year old car with 15, 20,000 miles on them, they're selling for right around 300,000. So you start doing the math on that, 15, 20,000 dollars, you're talking like 100, 150 dollars a mile to operate this, They're not even for any maintenance or anything, just in depreciation to drive this thing. Is it worth it to you? I don't know, I don't have the money. If you do, maybe that's just how you rolls.